Hey everybody, I hope you guys are healthy and safe. So everybody in the consumer tech space has been talking about Apple's Vision Pro and how expensive it is and how it's still seven months away. Well, what if I told you there is a consumer product launching very soon that is much, much cheaper than the Vision Pro, but it can do fundamentally, technically the same thing. I'm wearing it right now. These are the Inmo Air 2. So they are a pair of completely wireless AR glasses. So this thing by itself is a wearable computer. It has a chip, it has its own software, it has a two micro OLED projectors that pump out visuals through the lens via wave guide technology. So when I wear these and I turn it on, I can see a floating computer interface in front of me, just like the Vision Pro. Now I have to be honest, of course, the Vision Pro's technology is far, far superior to the technology in here. But the Apple Vision Pro is also far, far more expensive than what Inmo is asking. This thing is unfortunately launching via crowdfunding first, but the early bird price will be 599 US dollars. So what can the Inmo Air 2 do? Basically, there are a couple of power buttons here. Once you turn it on, you will see the floating interface with the software design by Inmo. So it's a grid of apps and they include apps for YouTube, TikTok, also translation maps, not Google Maps, it's like Inmo's version of the apps, a couple of AI apps that uses like ChatGPT and also a camera. So there's a camera here, although the photo and video quality are quite below par. I would say they're about on par with a budget $100 Chinese smartphone. Now Inmo is also keen to market these glasses as like stylish eyewear. They're saying you can wear these and look cool, look fashionable. I don't know if I agree. Uh, while these do look normal enough because I've worn these in public, you know, at coffee shops, at a park, and I haven't gotten any weird looks. Like people don't come up to me and be like, what are you wearing on your face? So they don't attract that much attention. But I don't think these look that cool. I think they still look pretty dorky. Or maybe it's just me. Maybe on a better looking person, these would look better. Now the display technology, as I mentioned, there are a pair of micro OLED projectors actually hidden in the back of the frame in a little sliver right here. And they project visuals through a little square here with vertical lines. This is waveguide technology. It differs from the birdbath optics that are used in glasses like the x Real Air or the Rokit Vision. Waveguide technology is actually a little bit more advanced. There's less latency between the, what the projector is pumping out and what you're seeing. And it's actually used by Microsoft's HoloLens. Unfortunately, the field of view for what I see, it's a little bit small. Right now, if I turn it on, the screen in front of me, it's about like this big. Inmo is saying it's equivalent to a 70 inch screen positioned about 10 feet from your face. By comparison, something like the x Real Air or the Rokit Vision give you a 120 inch screen at about the same distance. So when you wear those glasses, the screen is a little bit bigger, but that's not a fair comparison because these are completely standalone glasses. So as I mentioned, it can do live translation, turn-by-turn -turn navigation via maps, and all of them actually work. I'm particularly impressed by live translation. When I speak, it will pick up what I'm saying and then show me that translated language in, you know, on the graphic in real time. And it supports English, Spanish, French, Korean, Russian, Japanese, and even Chinese Mandarin and Chinese Cantonese. Cantonese is my native language, so that's pretty cool. How you been though, sir? There are also a pair of speakers located on the bottom of each arm directly above my ear. Unfortunately, audio leakage is quite bad. If you have volume at maximum level, people near you will be able to hear what you are watching or listening to. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the tools needed to show you exactly how the visuals look to my eyes. The only thing I can do is the ghetto version, which is take a smartphone or a camera and put it behind the, the glass so you can see what I'm looking at. But just check out the footage. I think this is an accurate representation of what I'm actually seeing, except footage does look a little bit more crisp to my eyes than what you're seeing on screen right now. Inmo did not share resolution, but I'm pretty sure they're north of 720p. They are HD quality.
So there are two ways to control the Inmo Air 2. The first is via touch. There are two touch panels on the right and left side of the arm, and they support four directions, up, down, left, right, and also tapped. So you can swipe, you know, like up and down to adjust brightness, forward or backwards to swipe through like photos and videos, and then tap to select. But there's another method to control, which is via this little ring. It's a pretty simple thing. There's like a four directional D-pad and a couple of buttons, and it allows you to control the UI exactly like what I just said, except you don't need to touch here. You touch here. There are built-in batteries in here that can power these things for about 80 to 90 minutes, depending on what you're doing. Charging, unfortunately, is done via proprietary cable that plugs into right here. It's a pogo pin. It's unfortunate because if you lose that cable, you won't be able to charge the glasses. And you will have to reach out to Inmo, which is based in China, to, to buy another charging cable from them. I wish these gadgets would just use USB-C. It would make our lives a lot easier. The glasses are quite comfortable to wear. They weigh 99 grams, so not too heavy. And they fit my face pretty comfortably. The nose pads are actually removable and interchangeable and Inmo says that with the consumer version you will get three different nose tip sizes to adjust. The arms are also quite flexible which is good if you have a wide head, it doesn't squeeze into your head. I can wear these quite comfortably, however I must say that after about 20-25 minutes I do get a little bit of eye strain. But I don't think that's necessarily Inmo's problems because I wore the Apple Vision Pro when I was at WWDC and I also got eye strain after about the 20 minute mark. And I also get eye strain from the x Wheel Air and the Rokit Max. So I think there's a chance it might just be me and not necessarily the product because other people that tried the Vision Pro said they didn't get any eye strain but I got eye strain. If Apple's product, which costs $3,500, still give me eye strain, then I don't have complaints about this thing giving me eye strain. It only kicks in after about 20, 25 minutes. So in the first 15 minutes, perfectly fine. Now, one major concern I have is lack of app support. Right now, like I said, there are really only about four or five things you can do with the glasses. There isn't even a web browser here, which is unfortunate because I think a web browser makes a lot of sense, right? You can read articles or watch other videos fire the web browser, but there is no web browser here. You can connect this phone and cast a phone screen to it. So you can, you know, go on websites that way, but it's not as ideal as just having a web browser built in. Inmo did say they will be building a web browser for the software soon, but you know, you have to take their word for it, right? Despite that, even if you only have the four or five things to do, I still think these glasses are pretty fun to play with. I love just having a YouTube video play because, you know, I can completely see through the glasses, right? So the YouTube video is playing in front of me, but it's like floating in front of me and I can see through it. So I can watch the video while still move around the house or even walk around and I feel completely safe. I'm not gonna like bump into people or bump into things. If you do want a little bit more immersion, Inmo developed a clip-on tinted lens that will basically turn these into sunglasses and then in return you will be able to get a little bit more immersion because the footage will be surrounded by a darker setting. But ultimately whether or not these glasses are worth $5.99 it's up to you because everybody's value of the dollar is different right so I'm not gonna flat out say $5.99 is not worth it. I think these are very fun to play with and I'm just so glad they exist because I'm getting a little bit bored of reviewing really mid-tier uninspired devices like mid-tier phones or entry-level tablets. Like right now I'm reviewing the Amazon Fire Max tablet. Yeah, the tablet works fine, but I'm so freaking bored of it because I've seen a version of this tablet like 5,000 times. I have never seen something like this. Well, I have seen something like this before, Apple's Vision Pro and the Xiaomi wireless AR glasses. So I've only seen something like this two other times by two of the biggest tech companies in the world. This is only the third time I'm seeing something that I'm wearing on my face and I can have a graphic overlay in front of me completely. So I'm just glad this exists, even if I am curious about just exactly how much usability there will be beyond just watching YouTube video. So anyway, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It will help me a lot. And I have a lot more coming. I have a couple of foldables, a couple of Apple products and a Huawei device too. So please stay tuned if you want to keep up to date with the latest in mobile tech. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.